Okay guys, this is a quick before video. I um, have my Ender 4 all set up and running. Um, nothing really programmed, just the fan itself running in the background. As you can see, I've got the Z-axis stop off so I can um, pull some things apart. It's, it's not really a functional machine, however, the fan is somewhat blowing. Um, but the thing that I wanted to point out is that it is not exhausting where it should. There are some holes over here that are the intended exhaust. There's no other reason for those vents to be there. However, the fit, none of the air is actually going that direction. All of the air is coming out the bottom. Right on top of your part, right on top of your bed, it's cooling your bed, it's cooling your part whether you like it or not. Sure, fine for PLA, ABS, it's horrible. So, just, I've got a little piece of paper here, nothing much, torn apart, just a little piece of paper towel, and, um, Sure, nothing there, but maybe it doesn't respond. If I come under here, I'm using the right light. You can see that thing shaking like a leaf. Well, exactly like a leaf. There's a lot of air going down around here, right where there shouldn't be, or better said, right where you would prefer controlled air. And it simply isn't controlled. This air has to blow to uh, keep the heat break here from causing uh, creep up from the print, from the uh, hot end up into the filament uh, that's coming through the extruder tube. So uh, you have to keep this part cool. You don't have a choice. You can't turn this fan off. If you do, you'll ruin your print head. You'll clog everything up. Um, so you have no choice but to push air out here. That's where the mod comes in. So I got my cover hanging by a thread. This is the cowling over the uh, print head itself. Uh, it's attached by the fan and uh, it's it's bolted in here. Pretty simple construction. Uh, simple design. Uh, again, these are the vents that the air is supposed to come out of. Instead, it's coming out this side, which is the bottom. A little bit is popping out the top. I don't mind if it pops out the top. This side is fine because this portion here is where I'm trying to cool. I don't want to cool here and I don't want to cool down here. So I came up with this little shape. This is a piece of aluminum cut from a tin foil can. Uh, I printed out the uh, the uh, shape, uh, catted it up and printed it out and then 3M77 did it to the can, just a spray adhesive that should do fine with decent temperatures. And uh, you'll notice also that this is going to be on the cool side of the aluminum. That's on the hot side of the aluminum. Um, so it should, the paper should be fine. If you're really worried about it, you can tear it off. The point is, I'm going to mount this with this little lip underneath the edge of the fan right here. And that will hold it in place. This will block all airflow going over the hot end. It'll also prevent the airflow going down. It then redirects it. you got a little bit of baffle here that redirects it directly over these fins and these fins only. Having it direct directly out the vent is a waste of purpose. Uh, there's no point in it. You want it to go across the fins and then out the vent first. Otherwise it's not actually transferring any heat. So this should force all of the air or the remaining air that isn't blocked by this shelf across the fins and then direct it back out the proper vents. There's going to be a little bit of gap here. Hoping to, try to uh, use a piece of aluminum tape to seal up those gaps. but. We'll see how the performance changes in just a few minutes. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's uh, finally finished. Uh, the, the nozzle should, the hot end should fit right underneath this push up against here. Um, I'm not too worried about this transmitting too much temperature. Um, it should be fine. Uh, it, it's, there's still a good amount of insulation on there. Um, and I'm also not too too worried about the fit. There's a little bit of gap here at the top where the air won't quite divert around it properly. I'm fine with that. Trying to make it better is what this goal is. Um, perfect, well, perfect would be a complete redesign of this hot end. Um, but this is a good first attempt at a cheap and easy way to uh, get this fixed. And so far, I'm all, all I'm out is uh, two aluminum cans because I had to do it twice and a couple of prints off the sh sheets off the laser printer. So, um, the fairly cheap solution. Not been too hard to assemble. But uh, let's see how it looks fitted. 
And one last thing to note is that uh, just before you put the cowling back on it, uh, you really do need to sort of button up this corner here, because there will be a lot of airflow out here. I was playing with it just a few moments ago, and uh, I'm not really a great airflow engineer, apparently. Um, I am getting out the better airflow across the, the vents themselves. However, there's not a lot coming out over the vent over here. Most of it is actually coming out up the top and a little bit out the bottom. It's actually it's reduced a bit, but not quite enough. So you do need to seal up this with, and I just basically used a couple strips of aluminum tape. I got about a uh, centimeter wide, too long uh, tape of aluminum, slipped it in under over top of the heat break, just or the uh, hot end, just laid it right on top of the hot end, glued it there, bent up a little bit out the back side, which is just perfectly fine, uh, and then bent it up again, uh, took a second strip and laid it across here, and laid it against these wires here. I don't really care whether these wires get cooling or not. There, that's fine. Uh, they're fairly well thermally insulated as it is. And then uh, uh, just basically took an extra strip and just laid it flat against this all the way to the back. Uh, and that just basically seals up this corner. It's not a perfect seal, um, but it should dramatically improve the airflow trying to penetrate down this way and get more of it to pop up and go out. Um, although I expect more of it's just going to go straight up. Okay, one last thing to mention that, sorry, I forgot, um, and I'll probably in insert this in where it makes sense. This little uh, limit switch is a nice little piece of equipment, but um, of all of the uh, parts and pieces that you would have to, that you would want to remove for this mod, this is the only one that does not come with a size screw that you, that, that uh, Creality provided a wrench for. For this one, you're going to need to have a 1.5 millimeter. Let's see, will you focus on that? Anyway, so 1.5 millimeter hex uh, key for this one. That's the only way it will fit, and uh, they don't provide you that one. Um, I mean, no fault on their part. They've pre installed this sensor, so uh, you don't really have to take it off to do this mod, but Getting it around goes that uh, end around these wires. It's so much easier just to take the stupid thing off and then uh, uh, just flip it up over the belts and uh, get your work done. And then don't forget to install it because the first time you do Z, it will crash the machine. Uh, fortunately, not violently. Probably won't strip a belt or anything, but uh, it will be annoying. So uh, just remember, you're going to need a. 1.5 millimeter hex bit to take this part, this Z or this. Uh, uh, see, this is the Y limit switch off. Uh, otherwise, you're just gonna have to suffer around getting around these cables. That's yeah, a pain. Go ahead and get one of these. Okay, now proof's in the pudding here, and as you can see, as far as the bit is concerned, it's heated up all the way to 110 without any problems. And that is with the Z-axis homed. So, um, this is actually a lot better than it was. Okay, so after putting in the shroud and, or the uh, little flow diverter inside the, the fan and sealing up the back corner, the little feather is doing much better now. Um, not a lot down here. Now, as you can see, he is absolutely nuts around the top. There's a lot of air coming out the back side here. There's a little bit coming out this side. Excuse me. Any of you is always fun. A little bit, not a whole lot. Not nearly as much as if this this were designed properly. Um, but this is far better. Most of the area is getting directed over the hot end and coming up out of the top, or getting directed across the heat break and directed up out of the top and not down over your part. There's a little bit of leakage at the bottom, but it's considerably less than it was. Um, and hopefully that will help tremendously with uh, ABSs and such. And when you actually put a part fan on the side of this, which, okay, I don't feel any qualms about putting a part fan over here because there's really not a lot of airflow over here. Uh, once you start doing that, um, 
then you'll actually have good control, uh, separate control of cooling your heat brake and cooling your bed, or bed in part. Because as it is right now, um, I, when the temperature is just right in this room, I can get this bed completely up to temperature in about two or three minutes. Uh, I'm talking high temperatures, 110 C. Um, no problem, a couple of minutes. So long as the bed's way down here. As soon as I move it up and zero the Z, um, it won't even stabilize at that temperature. It'll stabilize to 108. And um, the only way to actually get this bed to stabilize at 110 to start the print is to either override the print or bring the bed down, let it warm up, and then start the print so that it realizes the bed's actually warm. And even then, I'm, it's the, effectively I'm printing on a cool bed with a air blowing across it. Yeah, okay, my enclosure, yeah, not comp not enclosed in the least. Um, I have put like a sunshade around it to uh, keep ambient air from just blowing through like mad. But um, even that won't help because the fan itself is generating air and you can't stop it. So hopefully this will help somebody. Um, I'll print the things up on Thingiverse in a little bit. Um, uh, don't know the number, of course, but uh, there'll be a link down below for that. So, um, hope this helps, and thanks for watching, guys.